Hi, Mulees. I hope you all have been well. It's been a while. I miss me from between two mules, hopping on here to bring you a new YouTube video. But first, today we are celebrating our 1K subscribers, and I personally wanted to come here and thank each and every one of you for your support. For all of those who are watching our YouTube video today, I urge all of you to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with more such content. On this channel, we bring all of you all things MuleSoft and we cover events related to MuleSoft as well. So without any further ado, let us dive into our video. We'll be talking about setting up AnyPoint VPC on AnyPoint platform. But first, what is a AnyPoint VPC? AnyPoint VPC or AnyPoint Virtual Private Cloud allows you to create a virtual private and isolated network segment in the cloud to host your Cloud Hub workers. It is a logically private and isolated network hosted inside of Cloud Hub. You can connect your private intranet to your AnyPoint VPC as if they were all a part of a single private network. You can also connect on-prem data centers through a secured VPN tunnel or a transit gateway attachment or connect a private AWS VPC to your AnyPoint VPC through VPC peering or AWS Direct Connect. If you use a dedicated load balancer, you can also configure one or more dedicated load balancer to validate requests using your own SSL certificates and to map input URLs to call to different Cloud Hub applications. Each VPC allows you to configure firewall rules to apply to your worker. So let us see VPC connectivity methods. On the screen, you can see there are several methods displayed. Let's talk through each and every one of them. The first is IPsec tunnel. You can use an IPsec tunnel with network to network configurations to connect your on-prem data centers to your AnyPoint VPC. An IPsec VPN tunnel is generally the recommended solution for VPC to on-prem connectivity as it provides a standardized, secure way to connect. This method also integrates well with existing IT infrastructures such as routers and appliances. Then we have Transit Gateway, which acts as a cloud router in AWS, simplifying network access between VPCs, on-premise data centers, and third-party softwares while providing increased visibility and control over the network. Transit gateways effectively merge your organization's cloud resources and on-prem data centers into one network topology. Moving forward, let's talk about VPC peering. VPC peering provides connections between two VPCs in this case, it pairs your private Amazon VPC directly to your AnyPoint VPC. This enables you to route traffic between the two VPCs so they can communicate as though they are in the same network. And last but not the least, we have AWS Direct Connect. VPC peering provides a connection between two VPCs, but in this case, it pairs your private Amazon VPC directly to your AnyPoint VPC. This enables you to route traffic between the two VPC so that they can communicate as though they are in the same network. To use Direct Connect, your AWS Direct Connect partner and the AnyPoint VPC must be located in the same region. Direct Connect gateways are not supported. This method requires the use of Border Gateway Protocol or BGP for dynamic routing. Now, before we move forward, there are some FAQs that I saw and I wanted to address those as well. So the first question usually asked is what are the license requirements? So the AnyPoint platform based subscription includes two AnyPoint VPC licenses. Each AnyPoint VPC license also in, entitles the organization to one VPN gateway with a connection to one public IP address in a remote location. 
But the second question usually asked is how do you size up your VPC? Well, the safe rule of thumb for deciding the size of your any point VPC subnet is to calculate 10 times the maximum number of expected apps to deploy in the VPC. The range of IP address for the network must be specified in the form of classless interdomain routing or CIDR block using CIDR notations. The third generally asked question is about the VPC placement. How and where should you place your VPC? As an organization administrator, you can create an AnyPoint VPC and share it with any business group within your main organization. Well, last but most frequently asked question is about how do you deploy your applications on a VPC? If the environment is already associated with a VPC at the time of application deployment, the app resides within the VPC given that the app deployment region matches the region of VPC. If the environment is associated with the VPC after the app is deployed, the app will not reside inside the VPC until the app has been restarted. So if you're new to MuleSoft and you're using any point platform trial version to learn MuleSoft, you will not be able to provision a VPC under that trial version. So for simplicity's sake and for visibility's sake, today we will be learning about how to provision a VPC through screenshots and I will guide you through each step so that you can provision your own VPC. So before we get started, let's log on to your AnyPoint platform. Once here, you need to go to your runtime manager At this point, this is my trial version and I do not have anything um, configured here. But under here, if you see, there is an option VPC, private space and load balancer. When you have a licensed version of any point platform, even if it's a starter pack, you will be able to click on this and where it is all grayed out, you will be able to click on create VPC to provision your own VPC. So after you click on this create VPC, you go on to, a, to see a window like this. On this window, you will see it asks you for several general information and it's as easy as that to provision your VPC. You can give your VPC name, the region on which you want to host it, the CIDR block that you've already identified with your network team, environments, what this environment means is you can provision that environment under a VPC. It does not have to be one environment for each VPC. You can have multiple environments associated with the same VPC, but the best practice is to have a prod and a non-prod VPC associating to prod and non-prod environments respectively. If you remember, a couple of slides ago, we said that you can associate your business groups with the VPC. And as you can see down here, we can associate the business groups, whatever business groups you have defined, and only the members of that business group will be able to see the VPC with which they are associated. And once you're done with this, you can just click on save or create VPC and your VPC will be configured. Now let us go back a couple of slides. And we said that there are multiple lev multiple connectivity methods to AnyPoint VPC. At this point, we have understood and seen how easy and simple it is to create a VPC. In this video, we will be discussing the IPsec tunnel connectivity method. Just for reminder's sake, IPC tunnel with network to network configuration allows us to connect your on-prem data centers to, to the AnyPoint VPC. An IPsec tunnel is generally the recommended solution for VPC to on-prem connectivity. And this provides a secured and safe way to connect to your AnyPoint VPC. To configure your routing IPs and your CIDR block to your on-prem data centers for easy access. So let us see how do we do that. As I said before, once you've provisioned your VPC, you will be able to see a VPN option as well 
on your paid version of any point platform. We click on this VPN option and we see there is a button we create VPN. Once we click on that create VPN button, we see a we see a window like this. In here again, it asks us to give it some general information. And once we do that, we will be able to configure our VPN. So it requires you to name the VPN that you want to create. Select the VPC to which you want to associate your VPN. Each VPC can be associated with multiple VPNs. Your remote IP address to your data center or your on-prem system. Now here you need to decide what routing type do you want to choose. If you want it to be dynamic using BGP or border gateway protocol or do you want to select static starting routing type. If you select starting routing type, you will be able to add a new new rule and here you will be able to specify your cider, cider block. After that, you need, you need to configure your tunnel configurations. At this point, we will go with automatic tunnel configurations to keep the video simple. If you go for your routing type as BGP, you cannot define cider blocks. Instead, you will have to def define remote ASN and local ASN. There's one more configuration that we spoke before, the tunnel configuration. In here, we have chosen to go with automatic tunnel configuration, but if you choose the custom tunnel configuration, you can define PSK and point-to-point -point CIDR blocks for each tunnel. And once you are happy and filled with your information, you can click on create VPN and that will provision your VPN for you. Now there are some things to remember when you are creating your VPN. You cannot modify tunnel settings after you have created the AnyPoint VPN connection. To change the settings for an existing connection, you must delete AnyPoint VPN connection and create a new one. You can select your VPN that you just created to view the details and download the configuration files. To be able to configure your customer gateway, for the VPN that you just created and established the IPsec tunneling, you need to use the configuration file that can be downloaded from the VPN configuration on any point platform and set up the customer gateway to enable the VPN connection. Now, once we have created our VPN, there is one more step to follow. we need to go back to our VPN config VPN and select our newly created VPN. Once we do that, we see a window, something like on the left side of the screen that you see, it shows us if the VPN connection status is available, device configuration, when was it created, the remote IP address, VPC, VPN, local ASN, all the configurations that you just gave while configuring your VPN. What's important to note is the second option here, device configuration. This configuration is very important to establish the IPsec tunnel connectivity. When you click on get VPN config, what we see is the screenshot on the right. It allows us to con download this VPN config file in any of the following formats. Once chosen, you can select on view config and it gives you a VPN config file. This VPN config file is needed for us to configure the customer gateway on the on-prem data center side. So uh, three things to remember. Once the VPN tunnel settings have been created, we cannot modify these settings. And to change any of the setting, we will have to delete the existing connection and create a new one. We need to select the view config option to
to be able to see and download the configuration file for VPN and then use that file on our customer gateway to configure the settings and enable the connection with our VPN and our on-prem data centers. And with that, we have established the connection of IPsec tunnel. If you have any questions about the video, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and keep subscribing to our channel Between Two Mules.